What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today I'm going to do a video on Demerl's Boas. So the last video I gave you guys a few options and Demerl's Boas seemed to be the one that everybody wanted to see the video on. So here we go. These guys here, they're from Madagascar and uh, they're about a, I would say a mid-sized to a large size boa constrictor. So a lot of people consider Demerl's Boas as being a dwarf species. I actually think that that's not, not the case. These guys do get pretty large and I'll try to show some larger ones in the video. This girl here is a female. She's about five years old and she is breedable. She actually laid some babies last year and um, she's uh, maybe, I don't know, four feet or so, four and a half feet. So she's definitely on the small side of breedable. But as you see, they're really pretty boas. They have these awesome patterns to them. I'll zoom in and, and the, the camera's never going to pick up all the all the different colors that this thing is throwing off in different light patterns, but uh, I'll use a couple different examples to show you. They range from more of this earthy brown tone to a darker gray, and they can be very variable in colors and patterns, so that's why a lot of people like them. They do come from Madagascar, but they come from the drier, more arid areas of Madagascar. There's two different types of bows that are often confused. One is the uh, Madagascar ground boa, and then the other one is a Demerl's boa. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the scientific names because I'll never get it right. So the Madagascar ground boa is very similar, but they're from more of the tropical, humid side of things. Their requirements are a little bit more like uh, if you almost consider a BCC versus a BCI. These guys are definitely a little bit uh, more forgiving, but both of them are super simple to keep. They actually can make really good pet snakes, uh, first pet snakes mainly because they uh, they don't really need super high temperatures. They usually eat pretty readily. They're very hardy snakes, and uh, their humidity requirements are a little bit lower than a typical boa constrictor. Recently, they've been coming uh, more difficult to find on the market. So I have a breeding group, and I'm breeding them this year. I usually breed them every year, uh, one to two litters a year, but they, they have kind of small litters, anywhere from 10 to 15 babies or so. Then I guess that would be an average. They can obviously have more or less. But 10 to 15 seems to be about an average across most keepers. And uh, they're just really cool snakes. So in terms of size potential, so this is, again, a, a female that's about four years old. I'll show you a male here. And um, this male is uh, about eight years old. So, again, still a, a fairly moderately sized boa. Uh, again, they're becoming harder to find in captivity. So years ago, you'd be able to get these things everywhere. They were all over every show. They were like $100 a piece. Nobody even wanted to buy them, but it seems like people follow trends, and when things get a little bit rare, all of a sudden everybody starts talking about it, and people say, wow, this bow, why haven't we seen it before? It's because they were everywhere and nobody wanted them. People stopped breeding them. So you could kind of see uh, the color difference. This one's got more grays and charcoals in it. This one's got more brown and earth tones, but they're still awesome snakes. Um, Getting more towards the breeding of them, uh, years ago, again, these things, they were so cheap. They were $50, $100, and because they're a pretty large snake and produce small litters of babies, I think people stopped working with them. So it was it's all this this kind of balance of, of uh, supply and demand, and, and I think that's important to consider when buying a snake is that uh, the price of these animals, when they go too low, people stop breeding them because it's not worth the time and effort to put them in the rack that they have or in the cages that they have. It costs the same amount for me to raise a $20 snake or a $20,000 snake. It's just uh, just kind of the differences between them. So I think these are really cool snakes. Uh, their care is pretty similar to boa constrictors, a little bit cooler temperatures, though. Uh, these guys would normally be around uh, like 90 degrees as their hot spot, and they they can handle lower dips into the 70s, maybe low 70s into the winter time. Uh, in my rack system, I usually keep these guys towards the bottom, lower towards the floor, uh, where my floor, at least in my setup, my floor is generally about four to five degrees cooler than the middle, and the top might be a couple degrees hotter than the middle. So I'll I'll gauge my snakes and which ones go in what, and I'll move them around occasionally, but for the most part, the cooler species will will go in the bottom racks and, and that's where these guys fit. So really cool snakes, uh, becoming more readily available. I'd say an average price that you'll see for these guys, uh, depending on color and pattern, would be anywhere from about 200 to $400 for, for the babies. You cannot get these imported. So for the most part, you're never gonna see a captive, or sorry, you'll never see a wild caught Demerl's boa. Uh, for breeding, they're very simple, just like every other boa constrictor out there. I am going to do another video on how to breed just any snake in general. 
is I apply the same principles to breeding to a boa constrictor, a Burmese python, uh, corn snakes, milk snakes, it doesn't matter, with the exception of the ones that burmate, those, those kind of, I don't know anything about those, I've never tried it, I can't speak on those, but anything that doesn't burmate or hibernate, uh, this, is, this method, this video I'm going to do will, will encompass that. I'm going to pause this video, pull out probably the largest female that I have, just to show you a size difference. And again, let's take a good look at this girl. Pretty small, four feet or so, and she did lay babies last year. She does have follicles this year, so she'll, um, she'll, she'll give us some babies this year, hopefully. Last year, they did slug out on me. That was due to a malfunction in my thermostats. I was away for a week. All my thermostats got killed, so I think that... Um, it wasn't, it was actually slugs and stillborns, which I think something along the lines, they may have dropped too cold along the period. So I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to pull out a bigger girl and uh, we'll take a look at those two. All right. So we're back. I now have the, I guess the, an adult female Demerle's boa. This girl's probably about 12 years old, uh, maybe a little bit older, give or take. She has been breeding. She's locked up. Her colors are very pretty. Just to show you a comparison. Uh, these guys just are, are really awesome snakes, and they'll change colors throughout their life cycle. Uh, again, unfortunately, they're not super easy to find anymore, but they're really cool snakes. So they'll generally feed them just like every other boa constrictor. They have this nice loaf of bread shape to them, and uh, they're, they're, they are ground boas, but they're really good climbers. As you see, this girl's wrapping around me nicely, and she can climb easily. Uh, in Madagascar, where they're from, it's, again, a pretty arid place, so they're going to travel... Uh, a fairly good amount, but they'll live generally in the ground. And if you would imagine if this were on the ground in a pile of leaves or something like that, she'd blend in perfectly. So I did just want to show you this big girl to show you there is a size potential of these guys to get pretty large. She is bigger than most of the boa constrictors I have here. So if I were to guess, she's maybe eight feet long and uh, a really pretty, pretty snake, heavy bodied, easy temperament. That's what does make them good. They can be picky eaters as babies. So some of the tricks that uh, I've used to get them eating is to feed them birds, specifically quail. Quail have tiny little chick babies, and that's something that, uh, that will generally get them eating onto frozen thawed rats. But um, they can be very difficult to get eating, and, and it can be frustrating. So that's why I didn't necessarily recommend them as a first beginner snake. But if you get them established and you get an eating baby, these guys are awesome. And they can be really cool pet snakes for you guys. So hopefully this video was helpful. I'll keep making more. I think the next one I'm going to do is the worst pet snakes. Uh, there's a couple that I have in mind that I just want to get off my chest and, and vocalize my opinion on what's a good and a bad snake. So uh, hopefully you guys are continuing to like the video. Please like, subscribe, comment, share these videos if you think they're share worthy. I want all your friends to subscribe too because the channel's growing and the more it grows, the easier it is for me to do these videos for you guys. So give me some additional video topics. But again, I think worst pet snakes are going to be the next. And I may do one specific to Central American boas and dwarf snakes as kind of an underrated species. So keep me posted. Appreciate you guys watching and following and we'll keep these videos coming.